Welcome in, Laker Nation, to the 2020 Top Moments Selection Show. I'm Jack Angelucci, and I'll be your host as we celebrate some of the top moments from the past year in Mercyhurst Athletics. Our bracket is broken into four regions, the Shamrock, Laker Effect, Carpe Diem, and Anchor Regions. Each region features eight top moments with matchups decided through a fan vote. Let's begin the reveal with the Shamrock Region. Up first is women's soccer with their 10-0 win over Wheeling. In the beginning of the season, Alyssa Otto, Laya Santos, and Christy Sensky led the way with two goals apiece, while Ville Vold never faced a shot on goal behind a stout performance from the Laker defense. Up against women's soccer will be the men's cross-country team who finished second as a team at the race in the park, while Joe Groth finished fourth individually. Our next Shamrock matchup is between men's soccer and their 11-1 win over the University of Pitt Johnstown that saw Hadi Sar, Henry Tophoven, Massimo Busima, and Vincenzo Esposito net two goals each. Martin Yark made one save in net, while Alfredo Gallo made two saves for the Lakers. They'll go against women's volleyball and its comeback win over Cal. The Lakers were down 2 0 to the Vulcans in sets before winning three straight sets to earn a big PSAC West victory. Our next matchup features the women's field hockey team and its first shootout victory in program history against Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Alexis Skabitsky, Claire Ahern, and Haley Skidmore each scored during the shootout while Libby Jones made three saves in the win over the Crimson Hawks. They will face off with the men's water polo team, who had Ryan Witzelowski named as an Association of Collegiate Water Polo Coaches Division II All-American Honorable Mention. Our last matchup in the Shamrock region features the football team and Doug Altavilla, who broke the Mercyhurst University career passing yards record. He became the first Lakers to pass 8,000 yards, finishing with 8,290 in his career. A big chunk of those yards there, as you see, on a touchdown pass to Clay Walter. They will match up with the women's cross-country team, who finished second as a team at the Doug Watts Invite, while Anna Alberti finished fourth individually in the race. So there you have it, our Shamrock region. Now let's reveal the second of our four regions in the bracket, the Laker Effect region. Women's Ice Hockey leads us off in their College Hockey America Championship win this season. Summer Ray Dobson scored the overtime game winner to defeat Robert Morris and secure the conference championship for the Lakers. Matching up with them is women's basketball. Amber Renz recorded her 1,000th career point as a Laker during the second quarter of the second Perico Pride of Erie Games against Gannon. She's the 20th Laker to accomplish the feat. Up next in the Laker effect region is men's ice hockey. The Lakers defeated then number 20 Arizona State 3-2 to start off the season. James Anderson recorded one goal and two assists while Owen Norton and Johnny Lazarus lit the lamp for Mercyhurst. Garrett Metcalf made 33 saves in net for the Lakers in their triumph in the desert. Keeping it on ice, they will face off with the women's club ice hockey team who won the club college hockey East Division II championship title this season. Next matchup, wrestling the number 10 Lakers qualified Six individuals for the NCAA championship. The Lakers crowned two regional champions, two runners-up, and had two individuals wrestle back to qualify. They'll match up against men's basketball. Tristan Pertapis hit a game-winning three-pointer from the corner with just over one second left to lift the Lakers over crosstown rival Gannon in the Perico Pride of Erie Games at the Mercyhurst Athletic Center earlier this year. Our last matchup in the region... We have our cheer squad and their win at the Zero Destruction Zone competition. They will face off against Women's Bowling, who earned their first career victory at the Columbia Penguin Classic. The Lakers went on to have a program game high of 981 at the Bowling for the Cure tournament. So there you have it, our Laker Effect region. Here to celebrate some of the top moments from the past year in Mercyhurst Athletics. First up is men's lacrosse, Caleb Kieber. Top cheddar, 13 seconds remaining game winner and a 10-9 comeback win over the University of Indianapolis. The Lakers found themselves down 9-6 after taking an early lead. Mercier scored four unanswered goals in the fourth quarter to pick up the win. They'll be taking on Softball, who received a team locker room and had ground broken for an on-campus turf facility, both program firsts. Up next in our Carpe Diem region, women's lacrosse. 
Emma Hubert recorded a hat trick during the Lakers' season opening victory against Walsh to record her 100th career point. They will take on the men's tennis team who won the PSAC Conference Championship and made it to the NCAA final site in Florida last spring. Now headed to Daniels, West Virginia, where Ryan Peters from way downtown on the third playoff hole of the Glade Springs Intercollegiate to earn medalist honors. And that moment will take on women's tennis, who won the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference Championship last spring. Our final matchup in the Carpe Diem region, women's golf, who finished second overall the PSAC Championship, freshman Kim Henry finishing second overall individually, and Claire Orr was named the Women's Golf Champion Scholar of the Year. Then we pitted up against baseball, who made it to the semifinal game of the Division II College World Series. Last season, the Lakers won the NCAA Atlantic Regional and the NCAA Super Regional to send them to the College World Series, where they earned two wins before falling in the semifinals. That's the reveal for our Carpe Diem region. Now for our fourth and final region reveal, the anchor region. First up is women's rowing. The Lakers pulled away from Canisius to claim first place at the Finley Lake Autumn Classic in the fall. They will take on wrestling. Logan Grass became the 10th Laker wrestler to reach the 100-win plateau. He finished the season 28-4 and and was the Super Region 1 champion. He was an NCAA qualifier four times in his career. Up next, men's rowing. The Lakers qualified for the grand final at the Intercollegiate Rowing Association National Championship for the first time in program history last spring. They will face off against women's water polo. The Lakers earned a 12-10 comeback win over the Virginia Military Institute at the Laker Invite. Hannah Good led the way with five points from Mercier's, while Sarah O'Keefe made 15 stops in that. Our next matchup, women's ice hockey. Michelle Robillard, a little dipsy do and hello, the shorthanded breakaway goal against Robert Morris earning eight, the 8th spot in the Sports Center Top 10 plays. It'll match up with football. Garrett Owens finds the hole, hits some painter, and wait for it. There's the burst of speed down the sidelines. It's 98 yards, the longest play from scrimmage in Mercyhurst history. Lastly, in the anchor region, we have fighting for Folgs, Mercyhurst University, Athletics, and the entire community came together to raise money and awareness in honor of lifelong ice hockey equipment manager Mike Folga. It'll be up against men's basketball, who made it to the Elite Eight for the first time in program history last season. The Lakers swept through the competition in the NCAA Atlantic Regional with wins over Fairmont State, IUP, and West Liberty. The Lakers earned the eighth seed in the Elite Eight and fell 55-51 to eventual national champion Northwest Missouri State. So there you have it, our four regions in the 2020 Top Moments Selection Show. Jack Angelucci signing off. And remember, Laker Nation, to vote and continue to keep track of our Top Moments Tuesday on Hearst Athletics.